welcome back guys uh, so today we'll be discussing about uh, a new type of test uh, which is very similar to the previous test that we discussed which is the murray test so today we'll be discussing about worley loop test so today we're going to discuss about worley loop test so uh, this is also a very similar test which is used for finding the location exact location uh, of the fault uh, in a very long cable uh so here this uh, why, uh, the reason why we are learning this is that uh, here we are not dependent upon the uh, values given by the uh, manufacturer of the wire uh, instead we ourselves will find what is the uh, resistance of the wire uh, in this uh, worley loop test it is very similar to uh, the moray loop test but only thing is that here uh, only difference is that we'll find what is the uh, total resistance of the uh, the healthy cable and the faulty cable uh, from the test itself rather than depending upon the values given by the uh, manufacturers because over the time there could be differences in the values uh, because of which uh, we'll only depend on the uh, values given by the uh, manufacturer so yeah so let's look at uh, the setup for this particular test so we have a v stones bridge uh, we have a p another resistance q uh, here in this test uh, the p and the q uh, resistances would be fixed uh, the only variable resistance would be s so we have a galvanometer over here which is connected through a switch and and let's say we have another resistance S, which is variable. And after that, we have our, uh, let's say this is a healthy cable. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we have the faulty cable. Here we are looking at uh, earth line to earth fault in this case. So let's say there's a uh, resistive fault that has occurred between the line and the earth. And this is a connection that we are giving with no resistance. It is, uh, we are considering that it has, a, it has a uniform resistance and a uniform cross section area for both uh, the uh, uh, healthy cable and the uh, and our faulty cable and we're going to consider consider that uh, these two cable lengths are of same length let's say let's take this as l so this will also be l and let's say this is the resistance over here let's call this s Let's call this x the resistance till this point, and let's call the length from here to here. Uh, let's call this a. Let's call this f the fault, b and c and d. Yeah. So let's call this uh, length as xl, which is the length that we need to find. And let's say the entire resistance from this point to this point, which is A to F, uh, sorry, D to F. Let's call this resistance as R, right? R is the uh, resistance of cable from D to F, right? So then we have our source battery, right? And we're going to have two connections over here using an SPDT switch. So let's say one connection comes from here. And let's say the other connection is connected to the ground. 
so this is a single pole double throw switch there's a one pole and two throws let's call this uh, m and n position m and position n right so this is our source right so this is the entire uh, testing setup that we have and first what we do is that uh, we'll be connecting the uh, switch to the position m the spgt switch so let's say at position m let's look at this case so in this position uh, let's redraw the circuit so uh, we have a p uh, then a q resistor a galvanometer uh, switch then we have our s resistance and what would be this resistance value of this resistance so this is p u s and the resistance over here would be equal to uh, the total resistance which is uh, r plus x r plus x because uh, here uh, this is the point of contact over here a and the resistance total resistance in this branch would be uh, the r over here uh, and then you have an x this uh, earth becomes uh, irrelevant over here because uh, the point is connected from this point a uh, to the switch so uh, even though it has a zero potential over here uh, still the resistance that is taken uh, that would be take coming at uh, the fourth arm uh, would be s alone and uh, it would be r plus x in this arm right so so at question m you'll have such a setup and let's say uh, we connect the source to it now the balance will be obtained at let's say for this uh, the balance is obtained at let's call it s1 because there are two portions so let's call this as s1 the s has got its balance at s1 so so this is a variable resistance right so yeah so finally we get the balance equation as r plus x by s1 is equal to p by q or you can say r plus x it's capital x sorry yeah is equal to p by q into s1 right so here from here we find what is the total resistance of the uh, cable of two both the cables right total resistance of both cables combined right or other you can say it is the loop resistance in this case so once you have found out what is the loop resistance now you can uh, move to the the next portion over here uh, in the circuit which is the end so let's draw for the end position at position n the circuit the circuit would turn out as we have a p uh, then a q at n you can see that it is a uh, it is connected to the ground right so so this is like this this becomes connected over here because both are grounds so now the resistance over here would turn out as s plus x s plus x over here because this 
s is also over here x is also over here and let's say the other resistance uh, is r over here and we have another resistance which is the uh, fault resistance but it doesn't come in the picture of the uh, bridge so because of which we can eliminate that so we'll uh, eliminate that and we'll connect the uh, system in such a uh, we get the reduced uh, circuit in such a format the wheat strings bridge in such a format and from here we can find what is at balance condition what is the uh, equation so at balance let's call this s is balanced at s2 right because s2 s is a variable resistor and x is a fixed resistance because x is what we, we need to find over here so here uh, we'll get it as the at balance we'll get it as p by q is equal to r divided by s plus x2 sorry x plus s2 right and what we can do is that we can add one on both the sides you know so that we can get r plus x on one of uh, on the numerator so we'll add p by q plus one is equal to r by x plus s2 plus one that will give it as p plus q by q is equal to r plus x plus s2 we'll take this inside and plus s2 by x plus s2 now we know we have already found what is r plus x in this uh, from the previous uh, equation over here right let's uh, name this as equation a so from a we already have found what is r plus x so from here we'll find what is x so let's take x to the uh, right side and uh, p by q p plus q by q and to the uh, right hand side and x plus s to the left hand side so x plus s2 is equal to so let me cross multiply q to both the numerators so we'll get it as r plus x into q plus s2 into q divided by p plus q now here we have s2 on the left hand side so let's subtract this s2 from the and we let's take it to the right hand side so we'll get it as x is equal to uh, sorry r plus x into q plus s2 into q now when it comes to the left hand side it becomes minus s2 and there is the denominator over here so let's uh, take the lcm so we'll get it as minus p into s2 minus q into s2 divided by the whole divided by p plus q so here these two terms gets cancelled and finally we'll get the expression for x x is equal to uh, r plus x into q minus s2 into p divided by p plus q right now uh, so we have found what is the resistance uh, if you want to find what is the uh, length of the uh, fault at length at which the fault is there what we can do is that uh, uh, xl is the length right so xl will be directly proportional to the resistance till that uh, point and we can say uh, the total length the total length of two cables since we have taken the length of two uh, one cable as l 2l will be the length which is proportional to r plus x right so we can divide these two equations from here you'll get uh, xl by 2l is equal to x by r plus x and from here you can find what is the fault length 
or the point at which the fault has occurred, which is x divided by r plus x into 2l, right? So, uh, so this is uh, how we find uh, the length of the fault. Uh, so this XL is taken from the test end. So this can be called as uh, in this, sorry, uh, in this uh, figure, this point can be called as the test end. This is the test end, and this is the this is called as the far end. So XL is the length corresponding to uh, the test end, right. Thank you guys, uh, I hope uh, the video is clear and have a nice day.